No, it's not. All right. <laughs> All right. So we'll uh, rise for a prayer. And pledge. Today, I feel we should, uh, in light of everything that's been going on in the country, pray for our nation. So steadfast, Lord, we pray against anything in our country leading to a state of disorder or unrest. We pray that we as citizens will recognize authority and obey it, even when we don't agree with certain things. Help us to use peaceful and legal means to address issues that concern us. We pray against those who are working to stir up trouble and violence and bring harm to our government and to our nation. May we work together in harmony for a better nation. Amen. I pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas flag. I'm in the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas once and indivisible. Oh, I learned quite a nice one. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, check these things out. Consider and act on requests for adjustments on relief uh, from the specific charges imposed by the district. I don't have any. I don't have any. Moving smartly forward. Oh, Review no. and act on the minutes of the August 2024 Board of Directors meeting. This is a real call, but it's a What? We vote on 5, 6, 7, and 8 together. Okay. It's a consent agenda unless a director requests to remove the item. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Passed. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Regular agenda. Three motion. A motion to accept the consent agenda. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Review and act on the district's uh, draft fiscal year 2024-25 operating budget and recommended water rate structure. All right. Well, we presented the budget to you last month. Uh, we gave you a um, copy this month of the updated one uh, with August financials in it, but as far as any expenses uh, or anything in, on the back, there's nothing that's been changed to what was presented. So we we'll get approved that tonight. I second. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Okay, approved. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Review and act on the financial reports and disbursements of August 2024. Uh, I think going to number we did water service. Oh, sorry. Uh, number 10. Okay. So uh, consider an act on policy RNS 12 rates for water service. So RNS 12 is the policy document that uh, calls out what your water sewer rates are. So oh. right. We're not we're not proposing we're not proposing any changes to the retail water sewer rate, but we need a document that SJA's groundwater uh, reduction plan rate down. So we need to document that within RNS 12 and a copy of RNS 12 is there. Uh, with, yeah, with the new rate, which goes down to uh, 297 from 3. Does that get mailed here? This document, or it's just published. That doesn't RNS get mailed, no. Yeah. It's on the back of every water bill. Okay. That exact. Yeah, this, yep. this chart. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's no action needed on that. There is action to approve the revised RNS 12 to include the change for SJ's GRPP going down to all motions to accept it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right, we got it. All right. Number 11, conduct a public hearing regarding the district's intent to levy a 2024 tax rate. All right, so uh, last month we completed the first step of the two step process to adopt the district's point for tax rate. Uh, the board authorized publication of notice and a courier of the district's intent to levy a total tax rate not to exceed 0 0.166, which was at our three and a half percent limit for the rollback rate. All right. And that was published and compiled, correct? Yes, it will. All right. Then we can adjourn the regular meeting and then open the public hearing for any comments following the uh, 24th lecture. No members of the public present, we can close the public hearing. 
Okay. All right. Uh, that will take us down to item number 12. Consider <coughs> enacting a levy of the district's tax rate. So uh, the 0.166266 tax rate is comprised of 0 0.0425, so four and a quarter cents for debt service, and 12.3766, so 12 and change for maintenance and operations. Do you need a motion to adopt? That's actually. I move that we adopt it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. All right, approval and execution of amendment to the fourth amended and stated district information form. All right, this document is filed in the district in the uh, property records for Montgomery County. It has a lot of factual information about the district, including what your current tax rate is. Now that we have adopted the 24 tax rate, we need to adopt this amendment to reflect that new tax rate. Right. All in favor? Aye. Done. Okay. Receive the regular monthly SJRA Wilderness Division report, including updates on operations, projects, and public outreach. All right. Well, our packets in our report is in your fact on page 23. <clears throat> the only thing I want to highlight is we do have financials in several documents, and these are May and June financials for the Wilderness Division. Uh, you haven't seen those? But the project financials are also updated in your back, getting off page. Uh, so, Chris, this is the that new software that y'all were implementing is it's live now, and these are accurate. These are accurate. Retro back to February or something. Yeah, what we did was we pulled the old gear in, and that's what took a lot of the glitches, or made a lot of the glitches and everything else. So this does include everything when you look at this year to date. This is from September first. July uh, still had some glitches in the system, which is why we don't take it in July. Okay. That is all I have. Did you have any questions? I had a question for this. Can I have this email? Mm -hmm. I was just curious about it. But, uh, that, that's right. I'm sure I have something you know, like that. But I was just curious. Was it, was it sent out like county wide or just to the rooms? County wide. County wide? About how many? That is a very good question. I do not know that number. Uh, the PC department takes care of that. That's actually the second time they did it. They did it one time last year and the one time. It's done for the entire version. Just in the informational settings, when you're on your governmental aid. Uh, the Sunset Commission came through and said we need to connect with all residents throughout the county that could be either customers or potential customers. Just know, explain to them who we are. Yeah. So we started more social media. We started more stuff like that. You can see it's probably some of the videos we've done. So all that's based on the sunset recommendation to go through with more public involvement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, receive update regarding status of Bear Branch, Panther Branch, and Research Forest Drive Range Improvement Project. All right. Uh, a couple months ago, you received a, a, an update from the engineer, LJ, Donnie, to uh, give you an update on the project itself. And um, I think we learned that at that presentation that the new cost estimates were exceeding of the funds on hand. Mm -hmm. So the next step was to what, what we did was to see if we could locate some additional funding, uh, state or federal funding. So. We had a meeting with uh, Crenshaw and Tote's office, to, uh, which they attended, or uh, Crenshaw's office attended, Tote attended, and uh, just to basically hear the same thing that you heard, which was, uh, what is this project, what, where are we at, those types of things. Coming out of that, we updated uh, MUD 67, the lead on the project itself, about the results of that meeting, and essentially there was no um, low-hanging additional funds that would make that difference up. So where do we go from here? Um, so 67 uh, requested to basically get the committee back, the stakeholder committee back together. Uh, there was one years ago uh, when this all started uh, to get the stakeholders back together to to talk about, OK, where are we? What, what, where are we at now? Where have we been? What are we? What are the next steps to go forward? So um, so 
several of the stakeholder buds had not had a meeting or went before six seven so you haven't heard this they did they created it and so i'm asking all the stakeholder uh, muds to identify one or two board members that would like to volunteer to be on that committee uh the stakeholder yeah. committee okay yeah so. I, i'd like to get out of there too. okay if you want to do yeah put all three of us down only can have two okay you guys can go okay all right we'll do Easy and, and eric i because i've got people in my neighborhood that have some history with that how how are we to involve the public or is that for a little too early in terms of history on what do you mean uh they, they you know they go they follow the mud meetings and they got some insight that they shared with me um and so i i want to get people that are aware of what's going on especially with the changes physical changes to the the ditches sort of involved so i, I just just public get the public involved and aware okay. on that is why i want to sit on that committee sure that sounds great I think it's important yeah absolutely sounds great and the township's going to be involved too very stick it to the months for now um well then there needs to be a decision on what direction to go because right now there's there's not funding to do the project that's contemplated so one of the ideas was to to now that the model's complete, run a couple of different scenarios, see if there's another form of the solution that might be able to be accomplished with the funds that we have. Yeah. If if those if the decision by the committee is yeah, let's go ahead and do that. See if there's run a couple of scenarios, see if there's another solution out there that might fit better with the funding, then we'll have a decision to make at that point. If if the re, the results of additional let's just say scenario running of the model comes out and it's it, now nah, you know it, it, whatever there's not there's a dead in there then there'll be a decision to be made at that point and, and that would essentially say okay there's not a better option there's not a more efficient option or a more affordable option now what because we know that we're short in order to do the project and then that will you know essentially have require another decision to be made at that point what do we do <clears throat> got it so this this next step is Primarily the mud directors, the stakeholder scenarios. Yeah, the stakeholder mud group that that have put funds into the project at this point, um, and that there's six of them. And for the second time, yes, I believe that's I believe that's accurate. Largest stakeholder. That's your guess. Do you know when they're going to start the meetings? I uh, do not. Um, we have one more. We may actually have all the names. 46 happens after 67 last month, so they actually heard it after immediately after. So I think with y'all, we have we have all the stakeholders identified. So hopefully within the next week or so, we can get something together. But I'll, re I'll be reaching out to everybody that has volunteered and, and get get something on the books. Is there any possibility of, of going back to um, Crenshaw's office or to Toast or Creighton's office and see if we possibly can find some additional funding. Well, that's what we did uh, in a meeting three weeks ago and met with them. <clears throat> and there was there was not uh, jumping up and down saying, you know, we got a bunch of money available. Well, we didn't jump up and down I mean, we have a lot of money. <laughs> it's just a matter that elections have consequences and we have an election well, coming sure. up and we I need to be working for us i think the point that i heard that we don't don't real not a lot of home flooding and it's a street issue so uh there's there's actually home flooding that would be the same care of yeah i think what i heard in, that about right in some of the government funding that's available they look at um benefit analysis of you know how many structural flooding or how much structural damage occurs in whatever the solution is supposed to call um, and to your point yeah in this particular project this was more a project to uh, improve safety and in ingress and egress across research forest so safety vehicles emergency etc to get through um, not necessarily now during harvey this area there definitely were homes that were flooded in this area uh, but the tax day and Memorial Day, which is what the current model is modeled after, uh, there were minimum uh, mm -hmm. home floods uh, in, in the immediate region of the project location. So um, if you were going to go apply 
potentially for that type of funding would score real high uh, when it relates to structural damage. Mm -hmm. That point, mm -hmm. home structural damage. So how does how does mud sixty seven work into this? Yeah, they they sold the bonds uh, and and were the large stakeholder in uh, the immediate affected area. And then I believe there was an aspect of it that they actually had voter uh, authorization. There, yeah, there Um, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, receive the attorney's report. Nothing under the attorney. Discussion regarding proposed development along 1488. Um, where we are right now, we've asked the developer to just kind of shore up his request on demand, water sewer demand, because without that, uh, we don't really know what to ask um, yesterday, what we have and don't have in terms of line capacity, line location, and plant capacity. So we're working on that right now. Uh, and then you know, we can answer that question at least as far as capacity goes. And then at that point, if, if that's a uh, answer that is, you know, uh, we have capacity, lines are closed, et cetera, then uh, probably the next step is the developer would need to uh, probably reach out to the township and, and see if there's any interest in, in even changing the local boundaries. Which, that, as we mentioned last month, that's going to be a mm -hmm. uh, trigger. Uh, both parts, you got to have, you got to have capacity, but you also, you know, have to have the mud and township that are willing to annex property into the boundary. So <clears throat> that'll be the next step. You think that'll make sense to them? That something that they're receptive to, or you? Don't? I don't know. I, I, honestly, I don't know. I don't have a, a gauge on that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it, I think it makes sense for some of the reasons we talked about last month for for the mud. Uh, Control of the big number, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what what kind of facility. Yeah, if, if they look, I, I, my concern is mm -hmm. really on uh, I got the bottom of um, this house is that that border line around that calling the rural and proper tandem that would affect the the home values and on if they. Yeah, the the way that the buffer zone, which you call it, I'd be honest with you, I'd have to be more ready. Well, that's something that you want to talk about. You want to get this board to have to decide what are the accumulations of issues to the annexation. A lot of additional different covers that you can make, you know, the buffer, but what is the end of the buffer? It's time to tell you that. Uh, you know, change the world for this. It could be more about the UK kind of spot in any district allows you to better protect the resident than not have the problem. That's really the balance of that. Yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be disruption to this home tonight, whether it's in the district or not. It's going to help those residents in that disruption by having the property in the district. Buffers in 20. Yeah, correct. Correct. Do you, because you've been involved in the, the, the discussions, right, with the developer, do you guys get the feeling that they're anxious? Um, they're yeah. I don't think they're desperate. I think they're, I think they, they want to strike a deal. They're anxious. 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 they you know, kind of process from their standpoint, because, you know, if it's a no from either entity, all the triggers aren't met, um, then they got to figure out where, where to go, whether it's across the street or who has capacity, they got to do the diligence to now on that side. Um, so, and that all takes time. So what's the, the benefit for them if water and sewer compliance first get on them? I mean, I don't know what's okay. driving them specifically, but um, certainly, you know, being able to say that a developer or development is in the woodlands is a huge sell right. to, uh, you know, to your product, whatever that is, um, just because of the what the woodlands is. But uh, beyond that, I don't know. I mean, 
if one municipality could serve it faster than the other, that could be, but I don't know if that's a driving force for them at all. Um, but they didn't really indicate that the uh, city of Conroe was more able or willing or could do it quicker or slower or was more expensive. None of that was seen. I don't think they didn't share any of that. So I don't, I don't know what the alternative is. <laughs> If just for clarification, if the township says yes to annexation, this month 47 they have to because they buy water from Connor. No, I don't think no, so. We we would not very could that happen? Yes. City would not be able to annex the property. You would have to serve it on an out-of-district basis. You have a right. participation agreement from the township and the Conroe that would have to be amended to address this mm -hmm. kind of property. The other part of it is not just the township and some property, it also has to amend the RPA mm -hmm. and have the additional property to the property itself. Yeah, got it. So, so the, the, yeah. they really need yeah. a two for a deal. Yeah, it's a remote high priority, but if that were to happen, then the property would have to get service on the private district places to honor the honor to the image of property. Okay. If all this goes to the final name, we won't be subsidized in the same way. Right. No, I'm not expecting yeah, it. Right. Yeah. So he told them that the offset that is not required. Or, you know, uh, the capacity is the board here. What restrictions do we can we make those uh, restrictions work with those plain plain and still make that not be equal to that? Right. Okay. Receive and or act on the general manager's report. All right. Whoops. Lost my page here. OK, uh, I did want to update you on um, the item that you heard last month uh, regarding uh, DNO coverage, insurance coverage, you had requested to see different options. Um, I, I, I make a recommendation to for all the MUDs to move forward with uh, upping their DNO coverage from two to five, and that is an increase in premium of about uh, $2,200, um, which right now you're just under four. For your two million, so I thought it was a reasonable price uh, to up it. And so, just want to let you know that oh, I was moving in that direction. Uh, on on my uh, report on um, page forty six, just wanted to point out that um, I will be we will be developing a, a drainage ditch condition assessment uh, protocol uh, where we'll essentially on on a regular basis uh, probably. Uh, I don't know if it'll be monthly, it'll be every other month or so, maybe quarterly. We'll be running uh, the ditches to assess uh, condition assessment. Um, and then we will do a post uh, storm condition assessment immediately after the storm went say, to identify if, if you know the storm affected the uh, operational uh, integrity of the ditches, uh, trees down, et cetera, things like that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll be developing that process. Um, you can see some building uh, changes uh, in the in the works. We've uh, done quite a bit of uh, right now. We're just really working with painting uh, the public spaces, and then we'll be looking at uh, adding some technology, some screens for the public, a little bit better uh, connectivity in here, uh, security for the building, uh, some more painting in the in the suites areas, the office space. Um, and a few other things that we've been working on. So I'm uh, really excited about that. Kind of bring bring the building out of the 80s and, <laughs> and into the into 2024. So um, we'll be moving forward with those types of things. Did want to mention at the end of uh, the packet, there's a number of this month different articles uh, related to different municipalities in the area and things that uh, are uh, that they're going through. Um, and then and that's that's some good reading. And then lastly, I wanted to uh, kick it over to John to talk about communications. Can I, can I, can oh, I pause yeah. before? Go ahead. I was, was going to, I watched my ones when okay. it came out. And I noticed it was I, I watched the whole thing on the DNO you know, insurance rate. They, they voted to put me for what they have to put 
Uh, no, they didn't budget. Yeah, it was part of their budget. That was just automatic. Mm -hmm. Uh, my question on the shadow bend uh, sewer debacle, did you guys resolve that? Was that contractor? We're still working through it right now. Okay. Yep. We're still working through possible solutions. Okay. It's operational right now. There's nothing going on, but um, yeah, we're working through it. Yes, sir. Evening. Evening. Uh, page 52 starts your communication report. We are now in the fourth quarter of our strategic plan, so the, the focus shifts to value. Uh, infrastructure renewal communications, we've got Connor and Cindy here to talk in depth about that in just a minute, so we'll skip over that. Uh, I wanted to highlight that the upcoming wall bill where he's going to tout uh, reduction in the typical, what is it, the custom bill in the coming year, uh, thanks to um, the lower wholesale water rates that have passed through. You got some examples of uh, of current communication pieces here. You'll note if you've been scoring at home that we've added to our social media presence. Uh, we actually have some paid advertisement going out now to the Woodlands Online and, and the Chronicle, and those have been very uh, uh, performed very well. Uh, we're getting a lot of engagement through that. It's very encouraging, and then we're going to be adding Instagram as well. Of course, we uh, any day now. And then on the following page, yeah, some more uh, examples of current communication pieces. And then I wanted to uh, highlight the kids art contest. That was super fun. Uh, we awarded four prizes to Buttons and Rembrandts. Uh, it was a ton of engagement activity. And we'll do that again. And we're also going to display that artwork. You can find it online, uh, but we'll, we'll incorporate that into some of our public outreach that we have planned for the lobby. So we'll, we'll repeat that again. It's fun. Then finally, uh, outreach calendar uh, here for you. Um, we've got a big one coming up on the 28th, Woodland State Statement Solutions. We have 1,200 folks attending that event. Uh, and then the Wildflower Festival and 50th Anniversary Celebration, those are both at Northwell Park on the 19th of October. That's going to be a big event too. Always welcome to come on out and join us. we got some usual suspects here. Uh, Diane was out with me at Community Gardening Day for quite a while weeks ago. It was a really good event. Talked to a lot of folks. Folks really wanted to wanted to chat. They wanted to, to engage. Yeah. yeah. I assume it's a Saturday, right? That's the night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yes, Saturday night. That's, that's, that's the morning of the day 50th. Cool. Oh, and then there's something on here. Uh, well, it's actually on your calendar there, but um that US groundwater presentation. So that is a Zoom presentation next Thursday. 26, 7 p.m. That's the Jason Ramage with USGS of his annual summary of groundwater table data. A lot of good information. How do we log on to that? I'm going to send you, okay. Shelly's going to send you <laughs> All an right. email uh, directly to each of you with the uh, with the link. Uh, you can also find it on the website. It's our weekend. We're going to be pushing that out. Right. But cool. you'll get an email, so you don't need to write all that stuff down. Okay. Next Thursday, um, okay. Thursday evening. And if you miss it, we will have that recording. Definitely make that available. Thanks, sure. right, Thank you. Thank you. Kind of segue from from communications uh, into communications. Uh, okay. Item number nineteen. Um, last fall, um, the PEC uh, SJA entered into a contract to um, to hire a. Uh, Holloway firm to help with the communications campaign uh, for infrastructure renewal and aging infrastructure. Um, so that was that started last fall, and then over the, since then, over the last year, the the PEC has been working with uh, Holloway, uh, SJA, Township, etc., uh, to kind of get us to where we are today, which is really a point of implementation of the campaign infrastructure campaign. Um, so. We invited, I, I thought, since we're kind of moving into implementation, uh, it would be a great idea to have Holloway uh, talk to you about where we've been, what we're doing, and where we're heading. Um, and so I have Connor and Cindy here today from Holloway uh, to give us an update on what uh, we're doing to the PEC. Uh, my name is Connor Hicks, I'm the communication manager. Okay. Um, like Eric mentioned, we'll tell you a little bit about us. 
Um, and how we got here, next steps about water and oil movements, uh, and we'll also create you on the website that we can together. But before we do that, um, we'll do just a quick presentation. So. Um, so just a little bit more about Holloway Environmental Communications. We're a Houston-based firm. Um, we're established about 30 years ago as an environmental consulting firm only. Um, about 20 years ago, uh, we did uh, expand the communications. Um, our, our firm uh, you know, acknowledged a, a gap as it relates to public involvement, uh, specifically around like uh, the national environment policy. So that's where our communications practices practice was born. Um, and then we've um, expanded it since then um, into uh, sorts of strategic communications and creative services. Um, we do a ton of work, like I mentioned, in the East region. Um, we also do a lot of uh, coastal planning work along the Texas Gulf Coast, and then uh, really throughout the state of Texas. But um, a lot of our clients are right here in the Houston area, uh, supporting our kind of control districts. Grace County Engineering Department, um, you know, here locally among, among many others. Um, we're also um, you know, supporting clients at the state level, like the Texas General Land Office, and the federal level, which we do with most of the corporate engineers. Um, so we just have um, a few projects, you know, current and past um, of note there. Um, I'll dive into all those, but I um, just want to give you an idea of some of those. So, what is water renewable? Um, water renewable woodlands is a collaborative effort by uh, women's water, the buds, and the SGRA. It's focused on long term monitoring the patient and rehabilitation of water and wastewater infrastructure. Uh, those projects are sourced from the SGRA's 10 year project plan, as well as additional projects, projects that is monitored by them. Um, our objectives include transparency in our communication and, and all the ways that we communicate, and of course, educating the public, um, our customers. Um, and providing meaningful engagement opportunities and opportunities to provide to find people. Um, of course, you know, we want to ensure efficient, reliable water and wastewater services um, and maintain that infrastructure soundness. So how did we get here to, uh, to today? Um, we first started uh, back in the fall of last year with a needs assessment, um, which uh, really served as a great foundation for us to go into a communications plan. Uh, but in that needs assessment, we really looked at the ways that women's water and best care communicate externally with their customers and the public. So everything from um, you know what, what they have on the websites, the advertisements uh, that John was speaking to, um, and for the really it. Everything and anything in between um, we can get our hands on. Um, so, like I mentioned, that that really set us off for a great starting point. Um, we formed a lot of what we outlined in our, our communications plan, which really serves as a guide for implementation. Um, there will be some more targeted micro action plans um, that we develop as that we develop as we move further into implementation. Uh, but that communications plan really serves as as a, as a large scale guide. Um, and you know, that includes methods, tools, tactics for communication, um, but also includes internal processes. So, um, you know, we as a consultant team can make sure that we're moving in lockstep with the MWA, the public education committee, and the um, So we are you know, here um, in the present moving into um, implementation. And uh, really here, I just want to highlight a couple things. Um, um, you know, once we got our plan in place, um, first of all, is you know, our brand identity. You see that there in the logo. Uh, <laughs> our, our name, Water Renewable Woodlands. Uh, that was our first step. Um, that was closely coordinated with um, PBC and WWA. Um, and then from there, we um, you know, are ready to review here. Um, and today is the development and establishment of um, the uh, plans website. Um, those have been the two of the largest things that we've, we've been moving forward with so far. Um, in addition to those things, we've um, put together and really established some key messaging that will serve as the foundation for really all the communication materials that we're developing. Um, so, um, so, just a little bit about the website before Cindy jumps in more detail, um, but that website is really intended to serve as our central hub for information 
Um, you know, we want that to be a central place for the public customers to provide feedback. Um, we really want to direct you know, everyone back to that site um, as a trusted source for information in all of our communication, all of our advertisements, external communication. Um, we'll all have you know, this logo on there and this brand identity um, and links back to our website and for our um, up-to-date information. Um, I mentioned already that you know, we've just been in really close coordination um, with the PC on um, really everything that we've been up to. So what you're about to see here, um, just a moment, and then here, we have a little round of vision, a lot of the discussion. Um, and then lastly, we just want to know, um, you know, we will be looking to expand on the website as we progress. Um, so, um, you know, we realize that we don't have all the projects identified, all the funding sources figured out. Um, so there will be room. Uh, we have left to left room for to expand it, provide more interactive components on the site, and do those those things as uh, we have information. Um, and then uh, everybody, yeah, some new DAs has come and Jen have to walk you through the website tonight. Um, so, as Connor mentioned, you know, we do have our <clears throat> water renewal, the Woodlands branding right there at the top. Um, so, folks can really start to see that, that logo um, as the central hub that uh, really represents the uh, renewal plan. Um, and so, we're on the landing page here. What we're really trying to do is help folks obviously get information about what we're talking about, but also tell, tell a bit of a story, you know, about why we're talking about this. And so <clears throat> renewal, you know, is coming. Um, there is some uh, mention of the woodland, you know, approaching its 50th anniversary, and that is a milestone, a really exciting one. Um, and so, you know, there's been a lot that to be proud of in that that legacy of the woodlands. Um, but there are decisions that every um, township, town, city, you know, has to go through. There's not an exact science of time of exactly when that happens for every community, but um, there, are, there is a cycle, um, the life cycle of a, of a township, of a town, or a city. And so um, communities do have to um, make decisions, you know, at different periods of time about their infrastructure uh, needs and uh, maintenance. And so that kind of goes into that and also sources of, of various um, projects that in the future might be identified. Um, as Connor mentioned, there's no specific projects listed on the site. It's very high level, very broad at this point. There's no specific financial information listed here because that has not yet been confirmed or fully developed. And so that's important to look at the website right now through that lens. That does not mean in the future we won't have that information, but that will come as, as the project progresses. So why now? Why are we talking about this now? You know, obviously there is a component of this being a, a, a pivotal moment in the woodlands. Um, and all you know, so you have kind of going through um, those different phases. But so this just talks about you know how timing plays into when uh, a, a community might start to be looking at making some decisions about their infrastructure and renewal. Uh, if you want to go down a little bit more, who's involved? So we did identify through the various um, research that we did leading up to today that and this is all kudos to with those water and their great survey tools that they took out um, to the customers but we identified that there was a little bit of un, uh, unclarity a lack of clarity about the roles of the water estuary the mugs and so we do spend quite a bit of time on the site really elaborating on those roles and what each entity does and how they support each other in that uh work and so that's what this infographic because you probably see we do have quite a few infographics developed because you know words um, need a little bit more so they capture everybody's attention. Um, and we can also blow up it's great about infographics is you can you know use them in other settings as well, um, like social media or brochures, that type of thing. We go down what's included. This kind of speaks to what I said earlier. Um, projects are not yet you know finalized or determined, but they are currently under discussion and being prioritized based on several different factors such as condition assessments, expected service life, staff inspection, the history of the maintenance, um, how likely they are to fail. So those are just some of the criteria that uh, the leaders are looking at to, uh, as they're putting together um, a renewal plan. News and updates will be a section where we put news releases and other articles of interest that are written about this project. Um, so these are staging articles right now, but that will definitely have updated information 
um, when your site goes live. Then we also have a stay in touch. You know, people are on the website and they immediately hear, hey, how do I put them informed about this? They can sign up right there on the page. Um, to do that. We'll be sending out three out of these letters and updates. About the plan, about the plan goes a little bit more into you know what, what the plan is looking at, what the plan eventually could be, uh, could include, could be about, um, just gives that background information. This page is really meant to grow as the plan becomes clearer. Um, and so if you scroll down a little bit more, we also have a key definition here because some folks, you know, they may not necessarily know the nitty gritty of what water infrastructure is. What are we talking about here? And so this is an infographic that describes you know, what we mean when we say water infrastructure and you know, that includes um, sewers and wastewater and things like that. In renewal plant benefits, we often find that the public, you know, customers are interested in how is this going to benefit me? What if you're, what, if you're doing this, what am I going to get out of it? What is my family going to get out of it? And so this section starts to talk about um, some of those those benefits that looking at renewal projects um, could bring. And then this, uh, there's some lead in text in the, in the top there that kind of sets this up. But this is uh, just an engineering framework about asset management and how um, assets that are, you know, through their life cycle, how they're maintained and how as they start to get older, there could be a need for more reactive or corrective maintenance at this, uh, different times on, on their life cycle. Water is serious business, so we know that water means a lot to the business community and people's quality of life. Um, I think I, I've heard a lot from PC, like people definitely, you know, want to know that the toilet's going to flush, their sink's going to come on, you know, at the end of the day, and, and uh, they are happy when that happens, but not necessarily when it doesn't, right? And so it is serious business that affects so many different aspects of our lives and our economy. Um, so this infographic got one of some of those, those impacts that water can have. We have another infographic that goes a little deeper on that, um, how it can impact industry, and, you know, as simple as a restaurant, right? You need water to cook and to serve to your customers. Um, and it could also be as complicated as an industrial facility using water. So we know that water is very important. And we started. About us, as I mentioned, there was some uh, confusion on what everybody, what all the different agencies do. And so we really wanted to uh, ensure there was a lot of information, factual information about each entity, including links back to like the Woodlands Water site, SDRA site, information on mud to be killed on that. Like it goes you know, to a page about mud. Um, and so we really um, put a lot of content here about that. If you go down a little bit more, we created some infographics that explain the difference between SDRA and mud and Woodlands Water and also how they how they all tie back together at the end of the day. Um, and so this graphic even goes into, you know, who maintains what um, and who oversees what. So very um, information rich uh, infographic here. And then even more information about um, the difficulties and how, what they do. So that is the page where if you wanted to know, you know, all about who's involved, lots of transparency here about what everybody's what their role is and responsibilities are. You know, who's going to oversee things and who's going to eventually implement, you know, whatever chosen projects come about. All right, I think if we go back up to this talk, we have FAQs. I love the FAQ page on any website because it's so helpful. Um, you get to go on here and, you know, find out if somebody already asked the question you were thinking about. That's exactly what we do when we build FAQs. We try to, you know, sit there and think about all the questions somebody could have about a project. So these are the best tab that kind of in our initial realm in working with the PC and Woodlands um, Water and SGRA. We put the questions, you know, we think are gonna come up right away. But of course, you know, we don't know everything and people will always surprise you with questions that they come up with. Um, and if it is a trending question, this page is meant to grow and change and be added to. Can I interrupt you? Could you make functionality in the map to where they could put their address? We are definitely working on that. Connor kind of mentioned the interactive maps coming in the future. We definitely want to um, build upon like an interactive map where people can put their address in. Sure. And eventually, I'm giving you a real preview here. Yeah. Eventually, you know, once projects are identified, people could see, you know, well, what pro is this project right in my backyard? Is this right in front of my house? Mm -hmm. And that kind of thing. So we'll definitely get there. Right now, that mud that map is actually out there on uh, Woodland yeah. Water. Yeah. So we just wanted to replicate that here in case people have questions. 
Um, get involved. We definitely tend to engage the public and customers uh, of Woodlands Water. And John was mentioning social media. And there's a great following already on Woodlands Water and SGRA's pages. So we're definitely going to capitalize on that through this campaign and work like Congressman and Lockstep uh, with those two agencies. We also want to invite them to stay up to date on project specific information. So that's how they can find out and also submit questions. Everything they need there, they have any questions and they want to get engaged. And then again, they can submit a question on this form. They just want to do that. Sign up for the email. Events is another page that will be built out as we go. Um, we'll definitely be planning open house, you know, large scale open house events, and also um, kind of going along with already existing community events that might be uh, already happening. So that will be filled in as time goes on. Media, we definitely anticipate and want the media to be interested, you know, in this um, because it is, you know, it's a big. It's a big project. Um, and so this is their one stop shop, the media. If they wanted to find out, like, who to contact to get a quote or do an interview, or, you know, what exactly is this project about, they could go here and learn more about that. Uh, and they can also go see our social media. Be surprised, a lot of media outlets find a lot of their stories um, or what they see on social media. So that's what the media page is all about. And then contact, that's the official page if you want to contact, you know, who's responsible for this, this website. That's how you do it. We'll be inserting the email there as we get closer to launch. The Find Your Mud tool, you saw it in the FAQs, but it's also here. So that way it's a little more obvious for people that want to see. Who will be contact So yeah, we would always work in coordination with the with, with, with water on any things like that. Probably is one getting in the future, if we were no longer engaged, we would work with Woodland with Water to transition that. So that is the website because we've covered everything there. So thank you all so much. So it's going to be uh, waterrenewalwoodlands.com? Water renewal, the woodland. Oh, yes. when, when do you expect it to go live? What is coming up next? Oh. Uh, <laughs> so we are looking to launch this, this website, our overall awareness campaign on water uh, this Thursday, September 19th. Um, along with the website, we are uh, working on building a survey into that site. Um, as we speak, um, and um, on the 19th, we'll be, um, you know, like I said, really trying to build awareness about the site. It'll also go live. We'll be um, sending out um, direct email announcements, uh, these releases, um, social media content related to um, the launch of both the site and this campaign. Um, those will really be our, our first steps here on the 19th, and then over time, we'll be working with John to get it into uh, Let's Water Weekly on Mondays. Um, into water bill messages, uh, into uh, perhaps another uh, advertisements. Uh, as well. uh, then just looking further, um, Cindy mentioned, you know, we'd be definitely be working at you know larger scale open house type meetings, um, leveraging uh, already scheduled community events to, to participate in, um, as well as you know more targeted state. Um, so uh, in addition to that, um, we'll see note of you know, community working group here uh, at the bottom. Um, I'll just expand a little bit on that. The community working group um, that is tended to be um, com comprised of um, representatives from each bud, um, representatives of um, each of the village associations, um, and um, some representatives from the business community. So we'll be reaching out to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and in addition, we'll be looking to, um, we'll be reaching out to local elected officials if they'd like to have a presence, um, and then representation from our students, water, estuary, and the township, um, and how we use um, invitations and basins and to, to participate in, in these meetings. Um, as far as meeting frequency, um, what we are looking at right now is on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, we want to be respectful of everyone's very busy schedules, and we also, you know, we don't want to waste your time. Um, you know, we want to make sure that whatever we need, there are you know, things to discuss, information to present. Um, but also, you know, having said that, we want to remain flexible. And so, you know, I, you know, I mentioned quarterly, um, somewhat at a minimum, and then, you know, but you know, this group will, will have some ownership as well as far as you know how much, you know, how often we want to meet, what what topics we we think need to be discussed, and so. You know, as we think it's important to have you know, additional meetings, um, you know, those are definitely be considered and then be flexible as much as we can in the economy settings. But as far as the purpose goes, um, this this group is 
really established to create um, a, a regular dialogue with the community, better understand community concerns, um, help us um, distribute um, information within the community um, and mitigate misinformation um, that might be uh, out there. Um, you know, but first and foremost, you know, establishing that dialogue, kind of building a level of trust and really understanding community concerns. That's our, that's our intent. Um, I feel like I might be leaving something out there. Um, but at this point, we, we'd be um, happy to take any questions you have. Um, what did you build the website in? What's the platform? I that's one of the how easy it is to adjust your output. You have a full programmer that's building it. So yeah. um, we do coordinate with the website developer. I'm not um, versed okay. in all the technical language there. Um, I, I think most of the time it's either between one or two platforms. But I guess just some more inside information about our, our web developer um, also does the SJRA's website. Oh, I see. Another thought, John, you know how I've been asking you for the how taxes are calculated. And then it makes your content richer. If, if I could put my address in, and know exactly how my taxes are calculated, how they because if we're going to start moving taxes up, be a good, pretty good place to stick it. What ends up happening down the road? Yeah, uh, to actually fund your projects. Right. There would definitely need to be like a breakdown for my mind. Of, you know, every everything that would be changing. Let's it stay. It increases transparency, visibility into the process, so that we're not the lightning rods. Yeah. And I think it'll be. We also envision that it'll be a landing spot where folks, if there's a project going on and it involves roadway or traffic or yeah. whatever, that they can go and say, "Hey, there's an outage today." On this road, or, or or this project's almost done, or here's the real, yeah. you know, just different information about different projects. You're already doing renewal right now. You have sanitary sewer yeah. rehabilitation you're doing right now. Right. So, you know, we could probably put some of that up pretty quick just mm -hmm. to show people what you're already doing. Um, yeah. Tax dollars at work. It's moving. Things are moving. So is there any time for a hollow lake to do a, a handoff to live in water, or are they just have a continuous engagement to build for the time of the future? Yeah, so uh, officially the, the funding is through Estray's uh, budget, which you've, you've approved previously. And there's a, that contract that I mentioned uh, will is being extended right now, but we're working under what's called work order number two, and that extends to April 2025 and under the existing funding that's already been pre approved. Uh, as we approach that deadline, um, I would, I'll, I'll take that up under Biden and see what we want to do from there. It may be that you know, we want to continue. Um, we still have work to do at that point. We'll just have to assess it at that, at that time. Okay. But that's, that's what's officially on the books, as I understand it. Is there some, Discussion to take this uh, this content and have it available in Spanish because we have so much of the population in in my area, for example, over half the people on my street speak Spanish as their primary language, and as more people are moving in, um, and I work in the community every single day, is that Spanish they can communicate a little bit in English but their comprehension and their identity to the product is in Spanish. So I'm, I'm well, this is, this is a lot of good communication for isolating a big percentage of the women's population. Sure, I, mean, I absolutely agree. There, there are tools that we can implement that can easily translate. I know we've got AI available to, to do that, but to just put you know a, a button up there in Espanol so that they can click over and then navigate through the entire site in Spanish, I, and you'll find they'll have a whole lot more participation with with people that have English as their second language. But if they can understand what's going on in their primary language, they'll navigate to that first. So, my as I recall, I have my notes from last month. Um, Brad had, had volunteered to be that representative. Is that? So good. Okay, perfect. And um, once we get the advisory group uh, completed in terms of getting all the those associations and all the other folks 
through by the end of tomorrow, we'll have the muds. So we'll have the core of it, and then we'll uh, be working to identify all the rest of the uh, individuals on that, and then we'll set up a meeting uh, with the city. Okay. So, great job, thanks. Yep. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Okay. All right, number 20, you received the Woodlands Water Trustees Report. All right, trustee report is on uh, page 56, where we summarize the, uh, the discussion topics. A um, couple highlights, uh, Cornerstone, which is a lobbying group that, that you've used over the last few years. They have actually um, acquired this $5.4 million over the last a uh, few years for a couple different projects. They continue to work on your behalf to look for additional funding on projects. Uh, so they just gave a little uh, update on these uh, guys could help on the uh, research. Perhaps we, we talked. <laughs> Let's yeah. we talk to them about it, um, and that and that may be something that they can they can jump into. Um, other than that, the budget uh, WWA budget was approved at that meeting, and. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Do we need for closed session? We do. Oh, we break. Okay.